um, I will transition to that. And uh, as was true with the last two, they had a certain um, a certain commonality, um, a certain set of, of shared understanding uh, that emerged and, and uh, shared narrative. Um, so it is with this, this current uh, module and what I just discussed, which was the issues of discrete and continuous time. I'm gonna be speaking about several models of control with an agent-based modeling. And this could have just as easily, ironically, been termed control of models. Um, it's models uh, of control and control of models equally much so. Um, because we're dealing here with the question of um, what's the computational architecture, and particularly the, the control flow abstractions involved in agent-based modeling. And this too shares with the last topic, uh, a bit of historic narrative um, uh, that, that recommends it. Traditionally, agent-based models um, have been based on libraries, libraries like the Repass library, uh, OpenABM. Um, uh, uh, there's, uh, that says ABM, that should be uh, Swarm, excuse me, Swarm, um, which was an early um, agent-based modeling approach uh, or package out of libraries out of uh, Santa Fe Institute. Um, and uh, OpenABM is, is implemented by a colleague of mine, um, uh, University of Michigan um, is where he started that work with uh, with Python, for example. And you know the the conceptual model here is familiar to us as computer scientists. It basically involves direct API calls. Um, it, there's an imperative style, um, often object oriented, uh, atop that, where one function or one method will call off to others and it's kind of a service request, right? I call off to this thing, say, add a connection to that agent, or I say, you know, move this agent to a different place or send this agent to message, um, et cetera. Um, and uh, the, the model here is traditionally top down. And in fact, traditionally you've had this combined with discrete time and you sort of loop over your program and you call off to this agent to update itself in some sort of way. And, you know, it's very top down, um, sort of monolithic uh, structure of, of a tree structure um, where, where one thing calls down to lower level things, et cetera, um, which is, you know, familiar at least to, to computer scientists and to those who aren't computer scientists, but um, have some computational exposure. But within recent years, and again, in the past decade or so, there's been a rapid growth in, in frameworks which reverse the direction of invocation. And you see this most notably in any logic, um, but uh, you see it to a growing degree in some other packages that have been influenced as well. And um, rather, rather than providing APIs that you call off to, that sit there passively and you call off to them to perform actions. These agent-based modeling frameworks provide a, a kind of uh, active environment, a, a dynamic set, uh, a dynamic environment which calls your code. And there's a set of, of components you define which are called by the environment. And the principle that, that this goes, by which this goes um, is named is called the Hollywood principle. And this relates to a topic I used to deliver in uh, CMPT 370, um, it, it very closely related to the issue of inversion of control. Um, one of ways of, of implementing it through being through, uh, um, uh, through dependency injection. The Hollywood principle basically says, look, don't call us, we'll call you, okay? Uh, don't just call our API. Our API will call you when it's your job to undertake certain actions. Um, and this principle is at some level quite old. Uh, we used to use it in Lisp programming uh, quite a bit, um, a beautiful language for those who have not yet enjoyed the pleasure of its acquaintance. Um, it was also used in early windowing systems where we had WinProx or even in Fortran. But the idea is basically that we provide event handlers and the system takes care of calling them. So rather than us calling system components to request their services in some sort of predefined 
manner according to the structure of our of our model and you know without and and rather than us writing a top level for loop that goes through each time point and calls update this agent the agent calls off to an api thing that says update my position from x to y or whatever we want latitude latitude this to latitude latitude that um instead we declaratively characterize update logic. Uh, we declaratively indicate that we have update logic to be executed uh, at certain points. So for the discrete time abstraction we talked about last time, we have on before step and on, uh, on step. And the, the system, any logic, when running the any logic model, it will take care of calling on before step at the right time for every agent in turn. We don't have to write that loop over all agents. We don't have to write the loop over all times, um, which is good because it's continuous time um, in, in many cases that we use these models. Here it's discrete. Uh, we don't have to uh, go through and, and you know explicitly broker this, uh, what gets done before, what get done, gets done after. We just put in code to be done before the time step and to be done upon the time step. Um, and this is legion. This is these are glimpses from our production agent-based modeling for COVID-19. Um, this is just a small glimpse of parts of it, um, uh, but you could see um, uh, one recognizes the lion by its claw in terms of the students who have undertaken this, or CMPT 394 and 858 graduates who have uh, done their instructor proud. Um, here we have. Uh, handlers for entering and exiting states. So when someone enters the state, for example, we have entry actions or exit actions to be executed when we're in that state. For example, here in entering this state of asymptomatics, which should be called oligosymptomatics, um, lions out there, um, uh, we update, hey, we say, okay, we have a, we increased the number of asymptomatic infections that we've counted thus far. Um, and uh, that you know allows us to do bookkeeping. How many asymptomatic infections have there been? Or if we, in other cases, so this is for states entering and exiting states. We often have code that we say to any logic when you enter that state, do this. Or when we cross the transition, this is from a model of um, um, uh, antimicrobial resistance, um, uh, something that's troublingly spread from farms for animal husbandry all the way to hospitals and long-term care facilities with the same bugs spreading along that entire continuum. And uh, this is a model, you know, uh, characterizing ways in which it, it spreads uh, at a more detailed level. Um, but here we have a transition going on and that's associated with a, uh, an action that's fired when that transition occurs. Back to the COVID-19 modeling, um, you can have self transitions here for infection that uh, that occur whilst in this infective state saying periodically i want to expose someone at a certain contact rate per day and it executes some exposure event um uh here's uh for a dynamic event over here this is the top oh, of professor class. yes yes uh I, i'm not sure if you're supposed to be sharing your screen but all we're seeing is your face right now Oh, that's a most unpleasant um, prospect. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you, thank you, um, uh, thank you for letting me know. I, uh, yeah, uh, my condolences and my um, apologies. Um, uh, wow, um, what an insult and what a loss. Yeah. So, uh, uh, okay, um, where to start? Uh, uh, okay, so we had um, uh, these variety of. Uh, of, of, of characterized, I'm just going to focus on on the model depictions. So these are the on before step on on step within main um, associated with, uh, excuse me, this is within the cell, cell saying how it's updated. This is for this asymptomatic state for entry and exit actions for that. Um, this is for the transition. And this is uh, for the case of this recurrent transition associated with uh, infection spread occurring at a certain contact rate, it calls off to perform the infection event. Uh, here, we have uh, a dynamic event like birth 
to bison in the uh, in the other context, um, we we would have uh, uh, a uh, uh, an event that goes off periodically and um, deals with people in, in gatherings that might spread COVID nineteen. And we have traditional events here that go through and in proper style using uh, the functional extensions to Java, it um, applies some logic to filter out people with, uh, with certain characteristics who uh, need to be in the reassessment queue for COVID-19 in a long-term care facility. Um, uh, often these transitions are associated or these handlers are associated with logic, for example, recording the number of people who have, um, who have received a uh, uh, vaccine, um, uh, but are waning from it. Um, and uh, in other cases for the startup and tear down of the model as a whole and for agents within the model. So the idea here is that again, rather than you calling off and telling any logic, do this, do that, you know, add this uh, at certain times, looping through all the agents, looping through all the times, you're basically saying, execute this code when this occurs, do this when this transition is traversed, do that when this event fires, and it will take care of it. Now, there's a lot of benefits of this. One is modularity and separation of concerns. You can have different components that are invoked at certain places without having a deus ex machina that you know runs all of the model components and choreographs it all. Leave the choreographing to the package uh, is the idea. Um, and you can independently evolve uh, each of these components. Um, uh, you can separate the user code from the detail complexity of getting the, the model to execute through its boilerplate steps. Um, and uh, there can be fewer distractions in terms of not having to constantly look at the loop overall time points or the loop overall agents. The disadvantage of this, um, their disadvantages are notable. Sometimes it seems to people new to any logic, you're not sure where to go. Like, where do I look for this? There's sometimes it seems like there's no there there. Like, like there's no one place I go that's the master control, and I just follow its threads down to every little place in the model. You can't do that. Um, there's lots of distributed places. This is invoked under these conditions. That's invoked under those conditions. And it, instead of being one master plan that you can chase each of its elements. The flow of control can be less clear. It can be less clear how things work. You have to understand you know, a little bit how any logic is invoking things. And it can be harder to know how to change things. Now, there's several ways of implementing this. Uh, but because we're over time, I'm not going to talk about them other than to say that behind the scenes, what's going on is that you have these handlers being, being implemented in the Java code that's generated. And within any logic, um, you can go and you could say, for example, right click here, I could say open with and okay, it's not going to I bet it will be an unhappy camper for this because I didn't download some of the libraries in which this uh, depended. But uh, let's see if I can go open. Yes, I can open the Java editor. And here, ladies and gentlemen, lies the Java code behind a model. This is the complete rendition of this person agent, which lies at the heart of our COVID-19 modeling. Um, uh, but in as it is implements in Java code. It's compiled to Java code, all of these different constructs, for example. And the Java code uh, ends up compiling these various handlers into specific um, uh, methods, which are then uh, overridden within any logic and therefore invoked through object-oriented mechanisms. Um, you, you know, where it calls off to a certain um, a certain method, your method is the one that's used, the method populated with, with your code. And, and that's what each of these things uh, turns into. So if you were to search in the code, for example, for main here, you could find this code. Or if you were to search in the code uh, over here for person, 
for some of this uh, code associated with like this persistent asymptomatic handler, you know, I could go search for that in any logic and uh, I would find, uh, you know, it's associated with this entry action and I could find it uh, additionally within, within here. It's placed within this particular uh, area of this. Uh, and so this is a long handler, which is in an enter state method. So all of your things get, get uh, compiled down into particular handlers and any logic that are associated with object-oriented mechanisms. So thank you very much uh, for the warning. I'd like um, uh, about screen sharing, I apologize for that. Uh, I'd like the person who mentioned that to put their name in the chat so that I see that and can give them requisite credit. I'm grateful for your speak up. And since we're out of time, I will go now to office hours uh, at which I will be present in about five minutes, okay? Thank you very much. And I uh, hope this uh, lecture is useful in exposing you to three key uh, considerations with using, uh, using models in an agent-based modeling framework. Thanks.